Prophet is telling Omar, don't think life's been unfair to me. You're worried about me, I'm fine. I'm happy. And in fact, the Prophet he used to ask for this. He didn't used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a lot. He used to say, Allah Murzuk ala Muhammadin quta. This is in Sahih al Bukhari. Oh Allah, give Muhammad and his family just enough. He used to ask Allah for al kafaf. You know, a lot of times when we talk about Rabbana atina fi dunya hasna fi akhirati hasna wa qina adab, I'm going to burst your bubble. I, I, I have to. I have to burst your bubble because this, this ayah is used, in, in, my, in my humble opinion, sometimes in an inappropriate context that ask Allah for the dunya Rabbana atina fi dunya hasna fi akhirati hasna wa qina adab al Because Allah certainly did respond to those who don't ask for anything of this world. They just think that we only want in the hereafter. And our asceticism, our zuhd in this religion, is not one that requires a poverty or a torture on our part. So Allah taught us to ask for the good of this world and the good of the hereafter and to protect us from the punishment of hellfire. But here's the thing, what is hasana in dunya? Is hasana in dunya an amazingly big house, an amazingly large house? Is hasana in dunya that, perf, you know, that, that attractive spouse, the one that you've always wanted? Is that what hasana in dunya is? No. Imam Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he said, Al-Hasana fi dunya ilmun nafi'ah wa rizqun tayyibah wa amala mutaqabbala. That goodness in this world is what the Prophet ﷺ taught us to ask for every morning and every evening. Ilman nafi'ah, beneficial knowledge. This is of this dunya, right? This is good. This is good for you in this world as well. Beneficial knowledge. What is rizqan tayyibah. Not rizqan kathira. Pure halal sustenance. That's good, that's satisfying, that has blessing within it, that sustains us, that takes care of us, that doesn't involve anything prohibited. وَعَمَلًا مُتَقَبَّلًا And accepted deeds. So two of the things, of two of the three things that even fall within one third of the equation of what you're asking Allah for are still akhirah based. They're still based on the hereafter. Right? So asking Allah for enough, being in a state of kafaf, being in a state where you're satisfied, Having that mindset, Allah has given you enough and He satisfied you with it. So that you're not constantly looking around. And if there was anyone that could claim that he didn't have a fair share in life, it was the Prophet I mean, he buried six of seven children. Wallahi, I can't even imagine the pain of burying one of my children. May Allah protect us and protect our families. Allahumma I mean, I can't fathom that pain. I can fathom a lot of pain. I can't fathom that pain. I really can't. And I can't fathom the Prophet ﷺ having to go to six of, of his seven children's janazas and to bury them himself. That's painful. That's self... I mean, anyone else would have lost their sanity. Right? I mean, after the second child, you know, you might lose your sanity. Some people after the first. That's, that's harsh. But he didn't claim that life wasn't fair to him. And he didn't want his companions to see life as being unfair to him. Rather, he shifted the mindset. He shifted the priorities of the companions. And so what's interesting is that even the companions that complained about life being unfair, they didn't complain about life being unfair in the dunya we sense. They complained about life being unfair in the akhirah sense. So what am I talking about? When the poor companions came to the Prophet ﷺ to complain about the rich companions, they didn't say to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it's not fair. We pray like they pray, or they pray like we pray. They fast like we fast, we do everything they do, but they get to live in these nice houses. What were they complaining about? They get all the good deeds. Why? Because they have money to give charity with. <laughs> it's amazing. Like they, It didn't occur to them. Ahl al-Sufa, you don't see a single time the people that lived in the back of the masjid that really were poor. You don't see them coming to the Prophet and saying, Hey, I'm Abu Huraira. Right? As, good, as great of a companion as I am, you know, how come they get to live like that and I have to live like this? Even Rabi'ah ibn Ka'b al-Aslami, who the Prophet ﷺ told him, ask me, you have a blank check. Can you imagine if the Prophet ﷺ was in front of you? And no, the Prophet ﷺ is not a fictional blue genie. He's the Prophet of Allah. And he says, Salni, ask me anything. And Rabi'ah is a young, unmarried, homeless man. Think about that. And he says, Murafaqatak, your companionship in paradise. <laughs> that's all. The Prophet says anything else? Right? Like that's a given. You know, 
you're, you're my companion. You know, I, I love you. Clearly, I love you. We already know it's an established concept in our religion. You are with the one that you love. You'll be okay with that in that sense. Anything else? You know, you're sure you don't want me to throw in a wife there? <laughs> right? Or a house? Anything else? Rabi'a ah said, that's it. That's all I want. So the poor companions, when they came to the Prophet ﷺ and complained about the rich companions, they weren't complaining about their worldly situation. They were, they were upset because they thought they have more money than us, which they did. And they give more because they have more to give. So then the Prophet ﷺ told them what? You know, let me teach you something that you can give sadaqah with as well. Say, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. The, the, the remembrances that we do after the prayer. So the poor companions got excited. They had something. Then they came back to the Prophet ﷺ and they complained again. Why? Because the rich companions found out about that. <laughs> and they were doing that too now. And they still had the sadaqah. They still had the leverage of charity, of giving charity. And that's when the Prophet ﷺ said, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ that is the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He gives it to whom He wills. Meaning what? Look, if they're that rich and that's what they're still motivated towards, they are the exception. They are not the norm. Because you know what? The majority of the people of paradise are who? Poor people. It's a fact. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, richness, wealth is not discouraged in our religion. It's not. There were rich companions. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was a rich man. You know, the greatest of the companions. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the majority of the people of paradise are poor people. Why? Because most people, when they get wealthy, they become arrogant and prideful as a result of that. And that's why wealth is a greater test than poverty. Wealth is a greater test than poverty because we understand things in the absolute sense our understanding of fairness and justice is not limited to whatever years we have on earth. Wealth is a greater test than poverty. And on the day of judgment, it is a greater test than poverty. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the, even the rich that get into Jannah, they would enter Jannah, and this is also in the Sahih, that they would enter into paradise 500 years after the poor. Min kathrat al-su'al. Because they have to answer more questions. They have more to, to, to be held accountable for. So the, the fact of the matter is that نَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ بِالْخَيْرِ وَالشَّرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with, with ease and with hardship, fitna. And that's a means of trial for you. So yes, life might not appear to be fair, but Allah is fair. Allah is fair. Life might not be fair, God is always fair. And that's why Allah says, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا Allah does not burden you more than what you can handle. Allah doesn't give you more than what you can handle. Allah doesn't burden a soul beyond its scope. The Prophet ﷺ could handle six out of seven children in Janazah. We can't. We can't. Okay? Allah tests you according to your circumstances and He burdens you only according to your scope. And let's face it, there are people in this world that have overcome enormous challenges of poverty, of medical challenges, right? Of, of, of economic challenges, people that have overcome enormous challenges to do amazing things in this world because they didn't wait for life to be fair. Right? And that's just the, that's the, the, the harsh reality is that life will not wait for you to adjust your mindset. Okay? For you to have a boost of self-esteem. It's going to come at you when it comes at you. You have to be ready for it. And you have to adjust your mindset. And the more time you waste talking about, well, my parents were like this, and my environment's like this, and in this country we have this, and you know, I didn't financially have this or that, then you're going to be in trouble. And I'll leave you guys with a story. It's, this is a very interesting story, because I was reading it, subhanAllah. Actually, I was just reading it yesterday. I wasn't planning to share it in my talk, but I think it's relevant. I was reading a, a biography of an Imam Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah ta'ala. Ibn Hazm was a very rich scholar. Ibn Hazm, a scholar of Andalus, was a very rich man. And he used to get into a lot of debates. That's one of his flaws as, as, as a man, was that he got into a lot of debates and sometimes became pretty rough in his debates. But we take the good, obviously as Muslims, when we study the biographies of the people of the past, we take their good and we overlook their flaws because of the enormous good that they put forth. So Ibn Hazm used to engage in a lot of debates. So in one of these debates, he was debating a scholar from a more humble background. And Ibn Hazm won the debate, right? Because Ibn Hazm was able to recall a text that the other man was not able to recall. So the other man throws a cheap shot at Ibn Hazm. Here's what he says. 
And I'm trying to translate instant translation in my head. But he said to Ibn Hazm that perhaps I didn't see that because the oil from my candle ran out. You guys see it? What he's saying to him? He's like, look, I don't have the lights that you have in your house, mashallah. I only had this candle that I was reading and I was studying for the debate for. So maybe the oil ran out and that's why I, 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 I overlooked that text that you were able to recall and win the debate with. And Ibn Hazm, he said, yeah, and I had a difficult time seeing it as well under the golden chandeliers in my house. <laughs> what was he saying to him? He was saying that just as you are distracted by your poverty, and he didn't literally have golden chandeliers, he said that wealth is usually a distraction for people from knowledge. So your candle is a distraction, my chandelier is a distraction as well. No excuses. So he won the debate again. <laughs> so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be amongst those that are satisfied with what has been given to us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us pleased with him, both in the legislation that he's given to us in religion, and in the legislation of events that will take place in our lives. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those that are ultimate, ultimately pleased with Jannah, with paradise. Allahumma ameen. I'll cover the other side of this topic, which is whether or not God is fair then, inshallah ta'ala, tonight uh, in the discussion, which I think is really late night. So if you guys are awake, then inshallah ta'ala, see you then. Jazakallah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa I really love his video sessions. I mean, there's just so many things that he talks about. Um, being content is something that we should learn by ourselves. We shouldn't wait for someone to tell us to be content. That's the only time we can be content or for someone to feed our esteem. And that's when we become content. Everything starts from within. It starts with you and no one else. So be content with what you have. I mean, like he said, there are going to be trials, there's going to be all sorts of things in your way, but be content. And my question to you guys is, are you content with where you're at in life right now? Be truthful. You don't have to say yes just because other people will see maybe your comments or something. If you want, we can talk about it in the DMs. Follow me on on Instagram, so funny or on Funny and Jesse, and I'll be more than glad to listen to what you have to say. Otherwise, this was very, very amazing. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it to the friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video. Thank you.